This is Kulali and her owner Garth. Garth was a successful engineer who started building Kulali as his final life project. Unfortunately, Garth never got to see her finished. I've been lucky enough to take the challenge on of completing her build and one day to sail her around the world. Similar to Garth, I'm a passionate engineer who loves to know how things work and how to build things. Join me on this journey to bring Garth's dream to life. This is Sailing Kulali. Welcome to my latest video where I'll be showcasing the restoration of a 34-year-old Saab M4 diesel engine. Despite being brand new and never used, this engine has been sitting for quite some time and has had trouble starting. I've done a lot of work on the engine and have learnt a lot about it and in this video I'll be sharing my findings and my solution to the problem. After many failed attempts to start the engine, I've discovered that the problem lies with the fuel system. The low pressure lift pump had disintegrated due to corrosion of the zinc casting. I'll be replacing it with an electric pump and I'll also be tackling the high pressure pump which is considered a high level surgery. This is not a task for the faint hearted but I'm excited to show you the results of my hard work. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. All right, so I'm just taking off this housing for the mechanical pump. So that's the cam for the mechanical fuel pump. This is the water pump. There's grease in there, which is good. Ooh. Cool. So the whole reason to take this thing off is inside there, there's a whole bunch of fragments from when the pump self-destructed. So those fragments would definitely go into that bearing and then fail that bearing. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna clean it out. So I'm just cutting out a blank thing plate for the fuel pump housing. So that's the new blanking, blanking plate. Um, I haven't fully tightened that up yet because I'm letting the silicon set a bit more to make the gasket and then you tighten it. Um, I obviously will paint that uh, in due course once the engine's going. And to seize everything uh, for the bolts for future help. But yeah. All right, so we removed the lift pump, the mechanical one that failed, pulled that off, cleaned the inside of that housing off, put that back on, put a new gasket on there, built that blanking plate, which stops oil from coming out. Then put this uh, 12 volt fuel pump from eBay on here just to try it. So fuel is gonna be fed from here, from the tank sucked up into here. This is a low pressure. This is some bad, piping work going into the injector pump now so we're going to give that a shot and see what happens and i've just realized these are loose so i might as well undo each one. Oh no i might tighten them up all right so all those lines are off now so we'll be able to check whether fuel is coming out of those when we fire this thing up this time so now i've just got to plumb this into something that goes live uh, when you turn the ignition on. I might just hardwire it to the battery for today. All right, I'm putting in another five liters of oil because the other oil was contaminated by diesel because the when the lift pump failed, it fed oil through the um, lubrication point where the oil comes through here into the sump. So that was a waste of 50 bucks of oil. This oil is only 30 bucks, so we're 70, 80 bucks in, in oil. All right, so I turned the um, fuel pump on the lift pump and fuel started coming out of two of these, um, which is interesting, so I'm not sure that's going to happen, but now at least there's fuel coming out of there, which we previously haven't seen. Um, so I'm going to tighten these back up, and then that should mean that fuel is getting into these lines 
and then we'll see what happens. But maybe first what I'll do is I'm gonna crank over the engine and just see what happens. So, fuel pump's on, and you can see that squirting out there. So I'm not sure if that's meant to happen, but yeah. So, there's definitely fuel going in here, I can feel it. Um, now, remember there was fuel coming out of these ones, even with the pump on, but this, like, is sitting and there's no fuel coming out of this even when I crank it. So I think there must be something wrong with the fuel pump. All right, because it seems like there's something wrong with the inject pump now, I'm gonna remove the inject pump for the first time. To get at it, I'm probably gonna to need to disconnect some of these lines the these um, this air intake, this alternator, and maybe some of this stuff down here. All right, so I've taken off the uh, fuel lines, the intake, the intake, the alternator, some other bits, the intake filter, and now we're left with this. Lots and lots of access. You can see there's a bit of debris in there. This was the one that where that was just purging through and these were not moving at all. So the plan is to pull this out and then have a look at this thing to see if anything's gummed up or seized up. And then if I can't fix it, I'm gonna take it to get replaced, uh, refurb. All right, so I've numbered the bolts one, two, three, four. That's all loose. I'll clean that up a little bit. These are loosened off and I've marked where this was in relation to that, although the timing of this, which is a cam inside here, shouldn't affect this, so fingers crossed. <clears throat> okay, so I just used this little spatula, tapped it underneath there and it popped out pretty easily. So now let's see without stuffing anything up and trying not to drop anything. All right, so there's something in there that's stopping it from wanting to come out. I mean, I'm probably I'm pretty sure it's like a linkage or something. Yeah, so we'll figure out. All right, so that little spring was in there, and that thing was in, the spring was holding that thing in, which goes to the coupler, I'm pretty sure. So now this whole thing should be able to come out. Nice. What a success. Good work, team. Cool. So this is the fuel pump. This is the, I think they call it the rack, and that controls the amount of fuel going through. So each of these goes up and down with the big cam inside the engine inside there. So that goes up and down, up and down, up and down with a certain timing. And the idea is that fuel which is entered into here is, is filled up along here. And then this cylinder compresses this cylinder in here. And then based on the position of the rack, it allows a certain amount of fuel out. But what's interesting is from what I've seen or read, this is meant to be seized if it's um, been left in there for a while. Um, I don't really know why that locks. See, like, if I go, like, across there, it locks in place somehow. So if anyone knows why that happens. Um, the governor was also connected to there. So the governor obviously was going to as there was more load and the engine revs dropped, it would pull on this a little bit. So that's what the governor is for, um, in addition to the throttle. So the throttle controls the fuel pump and the governor also controls the fuel pump. 
Um, so, yeah, if anyone knows why, that would click in there. Um, and then, so it clicks in there, and then as you pull that back, it releases back. So, I'm not sure what that's about. Someone So just remove these and from that cylinder this was bent. <laughs> so this is the pin that <clears throat> is bent and that goes inside there and basically that controls the height of that so looking at that it's been bent down which indicates that that probably wasn't sitting in the slot when it came down it was on the edge so that would have been stuck up hmm all right so i got that little pin out of this little thing now i'm going to try and bend that pin all right, it's put back together. Bend that pin back straight and clean everything out. Probably a bit more dirty than what it was. But now this slides really, really smooth. It's super smooth. So we're gonna try it tomorrow. All right, she's ready to go. Everything's back on. What we're gonna try and check now is when we turn that on, we shouldn't see, when we turn the lift pump on, we shouldn't see any fuel coming out of here until we crank the motor over. Ready to go. All right, that's on now. Whoop. And there doesn't seem to be much fuel coming out at all, which is, starting to sound promising okay now so that so that's pumping so that's dead heading against there so now what we're going to try and do is crank the motor and hopefully we see fuel squirting and not just um, dribbling out So we've got a battery connected to that now. That's the lift pump we installed. Fuel tank. Got a hose 
running water through it now, cool it all down, because this was getting pretty hot. And so let's give it a run. There you have it, after a long and challenging journey, the engine is finally running smoothly. The satisfaction on my face is indescribable, and the sense of accomplishment is overwhelming. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. Along the way, I've learned so much about diesel engines, and I've gained a newfound confidence in my abilities. I've also found so many spare part suppliers, and I'm excited to continue working on this motor and other projects in the future. I want to thank everyone who supported me through this journey, from the people who gave me advice not to open the inject pump, as it can be super complex, to the individuals on YouTube who have provided valuable information and guidance. I was also extremely careful documenting the whole process as I took the injector pump apart, which helped me fix it. I ran the motor for over an hour, and so far it seems to be okay. Thank you for watching, and I can't wait to share the next project with you. See you in the next one.